What's going on everyone, my name is Kodamor and welcome back to Electronics Episode 4. In this episode, we are going to talk about a few more advanced topics in electricity. So if you have trouble understanding what I'm talking about in this video, that's completely okay. Watch the video again, maybe look up a few articles online, and if you still don't fully under understand everything that I talk about in today's video, that's fine, just move on with the rest of the series, and down the road, once we begin working with this stuff a lot, you're gonna begin to understand it, hopefully. But hopefully I'm able to explain this stuff to get a basic understanding of the topics that we will be talking about. So, before we begin today, let's talk about uh, electricity very, very briefly here. Here is my big purple wire, and we should all know that electricity is just the flow of electrons through, uh, say, this wire. So, electricity is really just the flow of electrons. That's all electricity is in, in the ba very basic understanding. So, electricity is the flow of electrons, all right? Now, there are many characteristics to electricity that we can talk about, many traits to it, but they're kind of tricky to understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain everything using water. So water, whenever I say water, it's really going to be our electrons. Think of electrons as being water flowing through wires or flowing through pipes. You'll see what I mean. So let's draw a, a tank of water up here at the top, all right? So here is going to be my, my tank, all right? And this tank is going to be full of water. And you can kind of think of this tank of water as a battery in electricity. So when you're thinking about, about electricity, think of this tank of water as being kind of the battery, all right? The source for our electricity or for our water in this water system. So here is my tank of water. And this tank is going to have, say, a pipe coming down uh, down from it, like so. So here's my pipe, and of course gravity is going to push all of this water down the pipe, like so. Now, if we take a look at this system, we can notice a few characteristics about it. The first thing that we're going to talk about is water pressure. So obviously this water is going to be flowing down this pipe, and that's going to create pressure. You all know what I'm talking about, water pressure. Now, there is something very similar to water pressure when we talk about electricity, and it is called voltage. Voltage, like so. Voltage is measured in something called volts, and when we're looking at equations and stuff, voltage will generally be the, or the letter V. So we have voltage, and that is simply, if we look at our water system, water pressure. So the pressure of the, of the electrons flowing through the wire, all right? And it's essentially determined by um, the, the battery we can think of. So voltage in this case is determined by our water tank up here. It's the pressure of the electrons flowing through a wire. That's what voltage is. Now there's another thing when we talk about this. There's something called, or the, rather if we talk about our water system first, we have the flow rate of water. So basically how much water is flowing through this pipe, how much of it? That's what I'm going to be calling the flow rate. And there's something very similar to that when we talk about electricity. How many electrons are being pushed through the wire? Basically, how much power are we getting to push through this wire? So in our water system here, how much water is flowing through the pipe, the flow rate of it? And in electricity, how many electrons are flowing through or are being pushed through the wire? And what we call that, we call that, let me get a color here, we call that current. Current, like so. And current is measured in something called amperes. Amperes, and you'll generally, generally see just the letter or the word amps, for sure. And the, the symbol for uh, current or amperes is generally the letter I. Now, I know I'm talking about this stuff fast. I'm going to recap it all at the end, so don't worry. So current is the flow rate of water, if we're looking at our water system, or in electricity, current is the flow rate of our electrons. How much current is being forced through a pipe? So let's expand upon current a little bit more. Let me create a quick other water tank. Uh, picture this as being the same exact water tank that I drew right here to the left of this, like so. And this water tank is filled with the same amount of water, so essentially we have the same voltage, all right, the same water pressure that's going to be happening. However, this water is also going to be flowing down the pipe. We notice a big difference. This pipe right here is much smaller than this pipe right here. That means less water is going to be traveling through this pipe compared to the bigger pipe right here. Now, that means we have less current because less water is going to be traveling through this pipe. So we have less current in the system. And we say, 
Well, okay, I, I understand that. So current is less when we have a smaller pipe, when we have a smaller pipe compared to a, a bigger pipe like that. But what do we relate this to in electricity? Because we can't exactly change the size of a wire in a circuit. I mean, you can't have a gigantic wire in a really small wire. Well, I guess you could, but that really wouldn't change much. So how do we compare the size of the pipe, a big pipe and a small pipe, to our electricity system. Now this right here, what I'm just about to talk about is what I really want you guys to get out of this tutorial. This is very important what I'm gonna be talking about and this is what I really want you guys to understand. The size of our pipe in our water system can be related to something called resistance in our electricity circuit. Resistance, this is really our main topic right here. Now resistance is measured in something called ohms, and we're going to talk about this a lot more in the future. So it's measured in something called ohms. You're probably going to see the letter R to symbolize it, or you're going to actually see the ohm symbol, which is kind of like a horseshoe. But for right now, we just want to talk about what is resistance. Well, resistance is just like the width of our pipes, like a small pipe and a big pipe. Now resistance is caused by using different materials in our electronic circuits. And we're going to get into all of this stuff and how it actually works together in electronics in a little bit in the next few tutorials. But basically, different materials that we use to tra make electricity travel through has different resistance levels. So a really, really, really high resistance, a high resistance is going to resist the electrons. It's going to resist the electrons essentially meaning it's a smaller pipe. It's creating a smaller pipe for all the water or electrons to flow through. Whereas a very, very, very low resistance, it's not going to resist the electrons very much. Therefore, it's going to let the electrons through just like having a bigger pipe, thus creating more current or more of a flow rate of the electrons. So let's do a quick recap of what we really should have taken from this tutorial. We have voltage, and voltage is essentially kind of like water pressure, or the pressure of electrons moving through a pipe. That's not super, super important right now. Then we have current, measured in amperes, or amps, and current is our flow rate. It is the flow rate, or how many of these electrons are being pushed through uh, the wire, or how much water is flowing through a pipe. Now obviously if we have a really smaller pipe in our water system, the voltage is going to stay the same, but we're going to have less current, less, uh, less water flowing, and very similar in an electronic circuit. If we have that wire pipe thinner, then we're going to have less current. And how do we make that little pipe in electronics thinner? Well, we don't actually change the size of the wire necessarily, we use different materials that change the resistance of where the electricity is flowing through. So a higher resistance is going to resist electrons more, kind of making us a, a smaller pipe and creating less current, whereas a less resistance, very little resistance, is just going to let electrons flow through as normal, giving a higher current. So hopefully I made that fairly clear today, and we're going to be talking about this stuff in many, many tutorials. Hopefully I explained it good enough. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.